Hey everybody, wanted to bring a new Casper video for you to check out. Now, if you're not familiar with him or my page, Casper is about 10 feet long, probably about 250 pounds. He's an American alligator that I've worked with for the last 12 years or so, and he's the star of my underwater gator tours. Now I'm taking this video after doing one of my tours, so this is after, and I just go back in the pond and chill and hang out with them. And it was a rainy day, you can see the raindrops hitting the surface, and so I was trying to play with them. So I was uh, moving the water around as you can see here, and trying to get his attention, get him to come over and be interested. There he goes. So you see him do kind of a lazy little swing to see if it's food, see if it's edible. That's not like a full like predatory strike, that's not him attacking, but that's just me splashing around trying to get him curious, get him interested. And uh, give him a little pet on his feet back here. You can check out those big old feet and big toes. Love seeing their feet and toes. Now a lot of people notice those very white teeth. Uh, that's not because he uses crest white strips. It's actually because alligators and crocodiles both will shed their teeth throughout their life and regrow them, cycling through several thousand teeth in a lifetime. So they're always nice and white and shiny as they're constantly being replaced. Sure would be nice to have that for us, right? Now by now you may have noticed Casper is not the only alligator in the pond here. A lot of people think when I do my tours he's the only gator that exists in the pond, but that's not true. Take a look right here. So this is one of our other female alligators in here, and uh, right now we have five alligators in the pond at once. So Casper and then several females. He's a very lucky guy, lots of, lots of love from the ladies there. But we always have multiple gators in the pond. And uh, a lot of people think, oh, well, he must be special, he must be different, and that's how you can do this. And it's like, well, no, that's not true. We always have several gators in the pond. You can see them in the background, things like that. But Casper is the only one I have actually doing the tour. That way I only have to focus on him, and so I have him trained to come over and do the tour. And then the rest of them know to kind of stay back and, you know, kind of keep their distance. And that's training as well. I do train them to not be a part of the tour. guys I love being in here with him no matter how many times I do this and I'm in here with him literally every week every Friday and Saturdays when I run my tours I'm in the water with them it never gets old it's so cool it's so amazing to be in the water with them and see how gracefully they move through the water and just how well suited they are for their aquatic environment it's just incredible to see how they swim how they move I mean, again, I just, I can't say it enough. It's so cool. Oh, well, here's another one of the females down right next to me on the bottom. See her scooting along right there. So she's kind of a skinny one. She's kind of a newer wild caught one. So uh, we got to fatten her up a little bit. But there's Casper, the big man, the guy who's in charge of the whole pond, just cruising around doing his thing. You'll see him kind of chew on the leaves a little bit there. Sometimes he thinks they're food or something like that. And he'll just kind of play around with them a little bit and then spin them back out.
Now I train Casper using positive reinforcement. So what that means is when he does what I want him to do, I reward that behavior. And the way I reward him is with a little treat. It's something called Gator Chow. There it is and there it goes. And it's a little pellet that's made of chicken, fish, crushed bone, dried blood, all kinds of disgusting things that he finds delicious. And so I use that as a positive reinforcement for when he does what I want him to do. Now his main diet is raw chicken, raw meat, things like that, but I give him the little pellets just as a treat and just to reinforce that behavior. There's another one right there so you can kind of see it floating and he grabs it. Okay, so usually he'll feel that pellet there and reach out for it like that. Now this female you're about to see coming over is one that's kind of famous. This is the one that has the broken lower jaw and her tongue hangs out. So you can actually see the tongue right there already hanging out. And I posted a photo of this one that went viral and it was picked up by many different pages and shared all over the place. So there you can actually see the broken jaw very clearly. And that's from fighting with another alligator before she came to us. Now what's cool here, I'm actually holding her and she's holding me. She was swimming over to check me out and I put my hand out. I'm underwater. She doesn't actually know I'm there and she felt my hand on her chest and thinks it's a branch maybe and reached out with her little hands and held onto my hand. How cool is that? Now with an injury like this, this animal would likely not survive in the wild. Sometimes they do, some of them do make it, but I've seen a lot of them die from this injury in the wild. Now we did consult with a vet to see if it would be worth trying to do surgery and he advised against it because she's kind of small and she will grow and she will outgrow any prosthetic that we use and she currently can eat with assistance from us. So she's doing okay here in captivity and doesn't necessarily need the surgery and it won't be a very good idea for when she gets bigger. Now you're about to see Casper swim right up and boom, bump right into the GoPro I'm holding onto. And when he does that, you'll see these little black dots on his face, okay? These are called integumentary sensory organs. And he just snapped up another treat right there. But what these little organs do is they are incredibly sensitive to touch and movement in the water. So that's how he's able to feel around in the water. Because you have to imagine, normally he's hunting in murky, dark water, not this nice clear pond. And so he'll be able to feel for moving fish with those little sensors. Now what's also amazing is that somebody did a neurological study and found that those sensors are actually 10 times more sensitive than the human fingertip. A lot of people think, oh well can they really feel anything? You could feel a lot better than you can actually. And uh, they have this incredible sensory touch ability. See he gets a lot of leaves in his mouth like right now and uh, you'll see him kind of shake it out. Uh, he feels those you know in there and he's always feeling around trying to find something to chomp on if I throw a tree down or something like that. So he's always getting the leaves stuck in his mouth and just kind of spits them out. It's kind of funny looking, it's kind of cute.
I just want to remind everybody, you can come and meet Casper yourself. I actually do run my underwater gator tours where I get people in the water with Casper. You get to see him and the other gators. Now, you're not going to be touching him like I am, of course, uh, but you'll be behind a safe net barrier and be able to see him, check him out. And it's a really awesome, amazing experience that I do on Fridays and Saturdays down here at the Everglades Outpost. You can check it out on my website, www.crocodilechris.com. Now, I also offer a photo package, as you can see here. So these are all photos that I've taken of people on my tours with Casper. And so everybody gets to come and check him out, get photos with him, see him very up close and personal, while also protected behind the barrier. And it's just such a cool, amazing experience. Come check us out.